Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Joe Caulfield and Carl Donnelly, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. <laughs> we start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Prime Minister, the American President and the Chancellor of Germany. Well, what does CIDW stand for? Is it in fact all they've achieved at the G20? Checked in, drank wine. <laughs> <laughs> Is Merkel saying, Cameron, it's Denzel Washington? <laughs> <laughs> she presumably is suggesting an answer to the crisis, isn't she? She's saying, Call in Darth Vader. <laughs> or she's saying, uh, Careful, I declare war. <laughs> Is it, is it in fact Cameron interrupts Dirty Weekend? <laughs> is it Cameron introduces Drunk Woman? She does look a bit. She looks a little bit. She looks yeah. leery anyway. Well, looks like, I reckon it's uh, Merkel's going to the vending machine to get some snacks. So she's checking the order. She's going, is it uh, crunchy, ice cream, Diet Coke, what's it? <laughs> <laughs> is it David Cameron saying, children, I. damn, where? Yeah. <laughs> Angela Merkel saying, I have lived my life like a candle in the wind. <laughs> I've heard a lot of bad things about Men in Black 3, but it looks pretty good now they've cast Angela Lansbury in it. Can <laughs> <laughs> get the correct answer, please? Is it Cameron Issues Dire Warning? That's very good. Well done. Thank you very much, Chris. I was looking for was Cameron issued dire warning. This is the news of the G20 summit in Mexico. David Cameron put the Eurozone crisis at the top of a list of five big threats that world leaders need to tackle to avoid a global financial meltdown. Are we scared of this disaster? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see what the five threats were? They were, in fact, the Eurozone crisis, sovereign debt, the challenges of growth and low competitiveness, protectionism. <laughs> and failure to regulate the banking system. Now, you add those up, there are in fact six things yeah. there. <laughs> and he is going to tell that to the 23 countries of the G20. <laughs> it, would be, it would be good if, he, if in the middle of the five things he'd thrown in, like a genuine, the five things that this, we have to be worried are Eurozone debt, sovereign debt, low growth, that asteroid, failure to regulate the banks. <laughs> Uh, what was the last one? You mean low growth? That's not the one we meant. What was the one you said after low growth? Oh, the asteroid. We'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> it would be great, by the way, if we did an episode of this show for people who don't really watch the news, and then we discuss the asteroid as if this was actually a news story. I'm pretty sure that this show is for people who don't yeah. really watch the news. <laughs> How did the Greek elections go? Oh, they well, they went tremendously well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. People voted and they've got a new uh, government. They have a party that sounds lovely in Greece, the Golden Dawn Party. <laughs> it's a nice name, yes, isn't it? Yes, but they're actually the BNP of Greece. Yeah. But they sound yeah. lovely, like, oh, bowl of Golden Dawn in the morning. <laughs> oh, fascists. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I got a DVD called Golden Dawn. It wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem with these Mediterranean countries, though, isn't it, is that they have their main meal at 10 o'clock at night. Mm. Right, OK. Now, that means you go to bed later, you don't sleep as well, do you? Mm. You're tired for most of the day, you have to have a nap in the afternoon, and your economy gets knackered. <laughs> Surely austerity rule one should be tea at 6 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. I think it has got out of hand, though. I was in a restaurant the other day, and they were doing a special offer. Uh, if you buy a Greek salad and there's a German in the room, he has to pay for it. <laughs> But 
What, what did the Greeks vote for? Do you know what they voted for? It was a vote on, really, effectively, on whether they should stay within the Eurozone. Essentially, yes. I think yeah. we should stop calling it the Eurozone. Because if we continue to call them the Eurozone, they can call us Poundland. <laughs> I've got mixed feelings about, you know, Greece leaving the Euro, because uh, I actually discovered in my drawer that I have got quite a lot of drachma left. <laughs> <laughs> and I've counted it all up, and, you know, depending on how things go, I think I might be able to buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> or possibly the railways. <laughs> so... I always think Greek bailout sounds like something that they do at Eton after lights out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so difficult for Cameron and Osborne to talk about it. I say, Cameron, what is it, Osborne? You don't have a quick Greek bailout, do you? <laughs> You're insatiable, man. Come on, let's grease up. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Where was the G20 taking place? It was taking place in a place called Los Camos in it, Mexico. It doesn't have to be said like a villager from the Magnificent <laughs> Seven. Yeah. That would be funny if all of their speeches were done, yeah. were done in that voice. Well, you must have the villagers. Uh, <laughs> When the music stops, <laughs> you die. <Yeah. laughs> is, is a luxury resort the right place to start to talk about people's austerity? You know, if you're kind of going, there are five plants in the is middle of it. Really? A man arrives, a man arrives with yeah. a tray with a large pink drink with an umbrella in the middle. <laughs> Not no. Uh, yeah, like a Mexican a waiter going, yeah. Senor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Behind you, a mariachi band going, Guantanamo. <laughs> Go away, mm. Nixney on the Wantanamera gay. <laughs> <laughs> what Cameron should do is get a great big black hat and the sleep mask he got on the plane and he stand up in front of the G20 and said, I will lead you out of economic austerity for I am... <laughs> borrow. <laughs> <laughs> The G20, you, when, you, when you get a bunch of national leaders in a room together, you realise that, however hard you can fight against it, they are just a bunch of stereotypes. You've got Angela Merkel, a butch German woman who looks like a shot putter. You've got Francois Hollande, a Frenchman who left his wife for a younger model. You've got Cameron, a posh Etonian. You've got Putin, a KGB-trained psychopath. <laughs> You've got Obama, a cool black dude. <laughs> The G20's been written by the writers of Allo Allo. <laughs> what did Labour leader Ed Miliband label David Cameron this week? He uh, labelled him a tainted leader. He did. A tainted he did. Prime Minister, which yes. was a very early song by Soft Cell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he did. He did. Because of what? Because of... Well, because he's a too close to the rich and powerful. Yes, he is. This is all based on the fact that he got a text from Rebecca Brooks saying that, uh, you know, they were all in it together. Yes, you can. Yes, it was. it was. The other part that was kind of creepy about it was the, it was the bit at the start, which was, let's discuss this over country supper too. <laughs> oh, wow. It sounds like a really horrible euphemism. It does, right? yeah. It does. Like, I went out last night, ended yeah. up back at a girl's place, she gave me a country supper. <laughs> <laughs> I only went looking for a Greek bailout. <laughs> <laughs> It was impressive, I thought, as a technique. If you're going to go, the big thing that most of the politicians have done now is they have been forgetful at the Leveson Inquiry, and they've gone, I'm afraid I can't recall that. I can't... Did that happen? <laughs> I'm, I have no recollection of such a thing occurring. The genius of Cameron to establish himself as forgetful in the week of the Leveson yeah. Inquiry by leaving his daughter behind in a pub. <laughs> Jeez. Absolutely. By the way, what is... Um, what has Ed Miliband admitted recently? That he is related to David Miliband. Yeah. <laughs> Ending speculation. Yeah. <laughs> that he looks like uh, Wallace. <laughs> From Wallace and Gromit, which is why... He... <laughs> which is when he said of David Cameron, as part of the tainted Prime Minister speech, he said he doesn't live in the real world. He thought, Ed doesn't. He lives with a plasticine dog. <laughs> Actually, I had a long conversation with Ed Miliband about whether he looked like Wallace or not. Uh, it would have been shorter, but about once every twelfth of a second, an assistant had to move it on. <laughs> 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 But he does, he, the, the Tories have been going on at him for ages about the fact that he looks like Wallace, but they've got absolutely no room to talk about this stuff. Cameron looks like Iggle Piggle, Michael Gove looks like Pob, Eric Pickles looks like a Sontaran from Doctor Who, <laughs> Theresa May looks like Roy Hodgson in drag, Jeremy Hunt looks like Seb Coe with a wasting disease, and if you get in Duncan Smith and William Hague together, they look like Yoda's bollocks. <laughs> The point's going to Chris Hugh and Milton. 
Our next item is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news mm. and ask Hugh to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features David Cameron and Barack Obama. Hi, Barack Obama. Vote for me in November. Don't vote for Mitt. His name sounds like an oven glove. So, <laughs> say, David, you like, to, uh, you like to shoot hoops? Yes, well, actually, I'm, I'm just fearfully posh. I like to shoot almost everything. <laughs> Really, I've got an ex-police horse I can borrow. Hmm. Yes, anyway, my name's uh, David. I'm just chillaxing with uh, the rack. Yes. We've got a special relationship. Not in that way, of course. No, the, the Church of England would go mad. No, I... Um, you'll uh, have to forget, David. He's never been to a ball game before. He doesn't know the rules. Yep. Well, I like netball. In fact, I prefer football. Yes. And, hey, you! You better shut your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Shut your mouth. That's what I say. Shut your mouth. Um, did I, I'm sorry if I... Uh, if it, you, you better tell your limey uh, friend to shut his mouth. I'm going to shut it for him. You can take that Beckham with him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, he says, uh, would you shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh he, he's serious, is he? I see. <laughs> so, uh, say, have you got, uh, you got one of these? This is a medal I got for uh, killing Osama bin Laden with my bare <laughs> hands. Yeah, I did that. I did that. I killed. Vote for me in November. I killed a salmon with my bare hands. You want one? I've got, I got drawers full of this shit in the White House. Yeah, that's. Uh... So, Dave, you ever killed a man with your bare hands? <laughs> well, I, I, I thought of killing Nick a couple of times. He's the, uh, the kindest thing to do, really. Put him out of his misery. <laughs> God, it's hot in here. I'm as, I'm as hot as a pasty with VAT on it. Tell <laughs> me. No, I, um. I, uh. Hang on a minute. I'm almost certain I had my daughter with me when I came in here. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Right here. Now we play a round of Happy Birthday, Paul McCartney. This game <laughs> involved Joe, Milton and Carl. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round of the stand-up challenge, I launch a wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest, okay? Here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is retail. Can I have somebody to come in and talk on that? Joe Coffett. Uh, Tesco's have announced that they are going to overhaul their shops by employing more staff, uh, which is great because uh, the self-scanning doesn't work, does it? It's just a row of angry people shouting at machines. <laughs> just going, but there's nothing in the bagging area. I've removed it from the bagging area. <laughs> Do you know what's in the bagging area? Friggin' bag, what a surprise. <laughs> And also, I have to say, though, sometimes a person isn't better, right? I was at Tesco's at the checkout with a person at the checkout, and just by mistake, instead of the Tesco club card, I handed over my Sainsbury's nectar card. <laughs> the woman at the checkout in Tesco's, no word of a lie, she looked at the Sainsbury's card, she put it down, she then looked at her own badge. <laughs> Maybe she's right. Maybe I do work in Sainsbury's. <laughs> so the shopping came to £3.76. So I gave her £5 and a penny and then stood back and watched her head explode. <laughs> <laughs> and another shop, Abercrombie and Fitch, they were famously sued in America because they had a policy of only employing young, very attractive people. I thought, do you think Argos has the exact opposite policy? <laughs> Okay, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is health. Who wants to come in at? Carl. Um, right. I, uh, I suffer from recurring stomach problems, which sometimes lead me into quite embarrassing situations. One happened when, uh, about two years ago, I went to see Alicia Keys live in concert at the O2 Arena. That's not the embarrassing bit. Um, <laughs> Uh, en route to meet friends to go to the show, I stopped off at my doctor to get a little checkup, uh, and he said it was all fine, but he wanted a stool sample, so he gave me a little pot and said, do your sample, drop it in in the morning. So I put it in my bag and then went to meet friends for a drink before the show. About half an hour passed, I felt movement. I thought, I better do it now, I've got to drop it in in the morning. So I went to a pub toilet and I did my sample in a pot and put it back in my bag, went out, didn't tell my friends what I'd done, we just carried on drinking. About half an hour later, it's showtime, we went to the O2 Arena where I'd never been before to see Alicia Keys. <laughs> And I reckon it was about 30 metres from the front of the queue where I found out about their compulsory bag search system. <laughs> Have you ever tried to explain to a security guard why you're trying to smuggle a stool sample into an Alicia Keys concert? It's pretty tough. When he pulled it out, I've never heard more shock on a man's voice. 
he just sort of went, what is it? Like and I freaked out and said the first thing that came into my head, so I went, it's a pot of shit. Like <laughs> Which he then repeated louder, right? So he just sort of went, a pot of shit! And it went back down the queue like Chinese whispers. <laughs> About sort of 20 people back, I think I heard somebody go, I think there's a guy with a bowl of chips at the front or something. Like that. <laughs> so I'm just there, totally embarrassed, didn't know what to do. I'm always crying. I explain my story. The guy gets his supervisor who comes over, and this is a great response. I, I was honestly like, oh, I've got a bug, sorry. And he listens to all that and goes like this. He goes, All right, I believe you. You can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. The subject is relatives. <laughs> the scariest thing that ever happened to me in my entire life was when I was very little. My dad said, I'm just going to pop upstairs. And he went upstairs and he popped. <laughs> I didn't speak to my dad. Well, he was a bus driver, you're not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, he's allergic to cheese, not the taste. Just if anyone says the word, he goes, whoop. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often, but we've got some weird family photos. <laughs> my grandfather, he was a GI, and he was in the RAF. OK, he was a giraffe. <laughs> During the war, when board games were illegal, he was put in prison for being a Yahtzee sympathizer. <laughs> My uncle, he was a security guard at the O2 Arena. is called if this is the answer what is the question on the board are six categories Carl which category would you like um, sports please okay grand sport it is the answer is chickens nurses and rain what is the question is it what does Heston Blumenthal put in a trifle <laughs> is it name three things <laughs> Is it what are the most used sound effects in the radio drama <laughs> Monsoon Poultry Hospital? <laughs> There's been another monsoon for the chickens! Yeah. Why are all the actors yeah. Scottish in Monsoon Poultry Hospital? Yeah. <laughs> is it? Doctor, uh... doctor, I think this chicken is drowning! Yeah. What were the three main things featured in the film Golden Dawn? <laughs> What three things have a higher IQ than the entire cast of The Only Way is Essex? <laughs> what a harsh, what a harsh <laughs> in the nurses, that. Yeah. Yeah. Give me all the things that my grand says are stealing her money when I go and visit her <laughs> in the <show. laughs> Is it? <laughs> is it uh, what additional three things did Churchill think? <laughs> We should fight them on. <laughs> the we will fight them on the chicken. <laughs> we will fight them on the nurses. <laughs> and on the rain. Is it what Greece are planning to use as currency when they leave the euro? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, what's the correct answer? Name three things you won't find in a chicken nugget. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, is it, what are the opening stage directions <laughs> in the television drama, Monsoon Poultry Hospital? <laughs> Chickens, nurses, rain, a man walks through the fog. <laughs> what is the hospital I'm working in now, is it? <laughs> what was the name of Foghorn Leghorn's controversial early career porn film? <laughs> I'm sorry, I want to do more chicken next <laughs> hospital. Clear Bark! Clear Bark! Clear Bark! We've lost them. Uh, we've lost them. <laughs> That's finishing off the chicken at doctor, the end. Doctor, get me the beaster. <laughs>
Could we please? We're just amusing ourselves now. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the, it's the, what three things are going to feature in the Olympic opening ceremony. Thank you very much, you, Dennis. That's absolutely right. There you go. Yes, the question I was looking for is, what are some of the more unusual items which will feature in the London Olympic opening ceremony on the 27th of July? This is news that artistic director Danny Boyle has revealed some of his plans to transform the Olympic Stadium into the British countryside. The ceremony will include real farmyard animals, a cast of 10,000 volunteers, including a troop of NHS nurses, and just in case it doesn't rain on the night, there will be clouds suspended over the stadium which will produce rain. See, that's interesting. As I, I didn't think that's why he was doing it. I thought he was doing it because he's a filmmaker and he's making a film version. <laughs> of Monsoon Poultry Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone would be going, but where are all the Scottish accents now? <laughs> Doctor, this chicken seems to be ill. Clear block! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's going to be amazing. The uh, yeah, real farm animals will feature in the set, which includes 70 sheep, 12 horses, 3 cows, 2 goats, 10 chickens, 10 ducks, 9 geese, 3 sheep dogs, a cat, a bird, a spider, a fly, and an old woman. <laughs> uh, and the major question is, will she die? Uh, of course. She's dead, of course. They're going to transform the, the Olympic Stadium for 27 million into the great British countryside. 27 million, all people really give a shit about are the fireworks. Spend 26 and a half million on fireworks, <laughs> give everybody a toffee apple, yeah. a giant bonfire <laughs> with a ticket tout on top. <laughs> they're, doing, they're going to a great, great length of this British country thing. They have hired actors who are going to depict a family having a picnic in the countryside. They're hiring another actor to dress up as a wasp who's not going to leave them alone. <laughs> Finally, at the end, they light the flame. Well, I say flame, they're lighting a pyre of uh, cattle that have died from foot and mouth. <laughs> but the whole, the whole idea is to, like, he's trying to make it the most sort of British thing. But I, I reckon the funniest thing you do, the most British thing you could do is have it cancelled on the day and have an opening ceremony replacement service. <laughs> I don't trust any of the Olympic preparations. Because you, you heard what they're going to do as a security precaution. They're going to have a destroyer in the middle of the Thames. Mm, yeah. How do they think mm. Al-Qaeda are going to attack? Some sort of armada <laughs> coming up the river. <laughs> and then they, across they won't the stadium, be expecting this. The closing ceremony is just going to be Boris Johnson in overalls and <laughs> wellies with a shotgun going, Get off my land! <laughs> Have you got tickets? Are you going? Are you going? Are you no, going? I have not. I have disapproved the whole thing. And I think most Londoners don't want it anyway. It's, it's two things they hate most, exercise and tourists. <laughs> <laughs> There's a huge investigation now. The IOC are investigating corruption. Yes. And touting. The IOC investigating corruption is like FIFA investigating corruption. <laughs> <laughs> But they've always been corrupt. It's like my grandfather, he won the limbo dancing competition years ago in the Olympics. But they wouldn't give him a medal, they said he just came last in the high jump. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to Chris, Hugh and Milton. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone could make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely things to hear at Euro 2012. <laughs> and there we see in the stands John Terry's wife, and with his arm around her, Rio Ferdinand. <laughs> well, this French team has three strikers. Luckily, the other eight have agreed to play. <laughs> Tonight's game is in the incredible city of Kiev. The outskirts are sort of crispy crumbly. <laughs> and Holland are two down. Yes, I've finished the crossword. <laughs> and the Greeks have reached the quarter-final. If only they'd had a massive bet on that. <laughs> Oh, that's a bad one. You can see the bone sticking right out. These Ukrainian meat pies really are awful. <laughs> and now over to Mark Lawrenson, who has something really interesting to say. <laughs> well, I've never seen that on a pitch before. It seems the referee really is a wanker. <laughs> Uh, 
No, mate. This is row six. <laughs> Your row 2012. <laughs> <laughs> Here in Ukraine, we launch campaign. <laughs> Kick football out of racism. And that is some incredible dribbling there from the Irish supporters. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And things are about to turn ugly as we go back to the studio to Adrian Childs. <laughs> It's Germany against Greece, the ultimate dilemma for the British royal family. <laughs> and that is quite simply some wonderful defending there from John Terry's legal team. <laughs> well, the Russians and Ukrainians are going to settle this with a shootout. No penalties, <laughs> just a shootout. <laughs> So, Germany are camped in the Polish half. Not for the first time. <laughs> and Rooney's trying to get round the keeper, but his keeper's not letting him out of his cage. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things you wouldn't hear on a political discussion show. Sorry, did I interrupt you? <laughs> No, 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 sir. No, no, you've had your say. Now shut the fuck up. <laughs> round the table tonight, Eric Pickles. And round another table, four other politicians. Pseudo <laughs> <laughs> masochism is a perversion. But we will clamp down on it. <laughs> Tonight we'll be discussing Greece. First question, who'd win in a fight, Danny Zuko or Kanicki? <laughs> <laughs> so, Nick Clegg, which of your two faces would you like to answer that question with? <laughs> yes, I agree, Britain's performance in the second quarter has not been all we hoped for, but there is a reason for that. This is a tough job, and I am shit at it. <laughs> We will not let Abu Hamza off the hook. <laughs> well, Mr Dimbleby, my question is, if I were a beleaguered European economy, how would you stimulate my growth? <laughs> and that goes to contestant number three. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I understand that people are worried about schools and hospitals, but what you don't understand is I don't give a shit. <laughs> Is anyone else horny? <laughs> and now we're going to head over and see what the polls are telling us. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> are they Chinese now? I think they're Chinese. Oh. Yeah, they are. All right. well, it sounds like Polish the way we say it here. So, here in Poran. <laughs> right, now let's go over to Wales and see what they're saying to us. <laughs> And so we have a question here for the Prime Minister from Nancy Cameron, aged eight. And it's, when are you going to pick me up, Dave? I <laughs> hear <laughs> <laughs> that round of applause for the Carl, Joe and Andy. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Joe Caulfield, and Carl Donnelly. Thank you for watching. I'm Darren Green. Good night. Tomorrow night at 10 on BBC Two, the laughs are found in LA with episodes. While over on BBC Three now, the comedy's in prison as new series Dead Boss continues.